According to the records of Muhammad and Islam, Muhammad, at the very beginning of his perceived mission, had greater veneration in regard to Jerusalem and the Temple of Solomon because he considered them holier than Mecca and its Kaaba. Will you explain? Our listeners should share with us the most astounding facts, that in the Quran, the names of Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem al-Quds are never mentioned, although they were supposed to have been the most important cities for the pagans as well as for the Muhammadan Muslims. On the other hand, the Bible mentions the name of Jerusalem at least 667 times. During his first 13 years in Mecca, neither Allah nor Muhammad saw fit to tell their followers about any Qibla, that is the direction of prayers towards Mecca. When in AD 622, Muhammad migrated to Medina among the Judaized Arabs, he was very impressed with two of their most important traditions. One, fasting on Yom Kippur of the Jews, which was evidently observed on the 10th day Ashura of Muharram. Two, and their praying facing the direction Qibla of Jerusalem. He instructed his followers to do the same. This lasted for about 16 to 17 months. Leviticus 16.29 And this shall be a statute forever to you, that in the seventh month Tishri, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls and do not work at all, whether it be of your own country or a stranger who sojourns among you. This day also happens to be the one during which the Shia commemorate the martyrdom of Hussein bin Ali and his followers at the hands of the Umayyad Khalif Yazid bin Muawiyah in 680. Sahih Bukhari 3.222, narrated by Ibn Abbas. The Prophet came to Medina and saw the Jews fasting on the day of Ashura. He asked them about it. They replied, this is a good day, the day on which Allah rescued Bani Israel from their enemy. So Moses fasted this day. The Prophet said, we have more claim over Moses than you. So the Prophet fasted on that day and ordered the Muslims to fast on that day. Let us together with our listeners ponder the following points. The fact that Muhammad had the first Qibla towards Jerusalem shows the immense reverence that he had for His Holiness more at that time than he had for the Kaaba, which was associated in his monotheistic mind purely with paganism. The word Qibla appears first in Al-Baqarah 2.142. The Quran never mentions Jerusalem by name or even Al-Quds. Since pre-Islamic pagan Arabs had absolutely no affiliations or regard for Jerusalem, and had no idea as to what it was or even to where it was, they could not have faced Jerusalem in prayer prior to Muhammad. The Quran does not ordain that at prayers the Muhammadan Muslims should face Jerusalem. This is found only in the Ahadith. These acts of convenient afterthought reversals became the pattern in Muhammad's life as reflected both in his Quran and the Hadith verses. If the Kaaba was the original house of Allah, as the Qur'an asserts, then there is absolutely no logical or theological reason as to why Muhammad directed the first Qibla towards Jerusalem, unless he knew and believed that it was holier than the Kaaba, especially since neither Allah nor Gabriel had instructed him to do so in the first place. Muhammad, after all, chose the first Qibla towards Jerusalem all by himself, without any prodding from Allah or Gabriel. To explain away this convenient politico-theological reversal and change of mind, he gave the untenable and lame excuses in the following verses. Al-Baqarah 2.142 The fools among the people will say, What has turned them from the Qibla to which they were used? Say, To Allah belong both east and west. He giveth whom he will to a way that is straight. And we appointed the Qibla to which thou were used only to test those who follow the Apostle from those who would turn on their heels from their faith. So presumably it was all a test for his followers. This is a stupid and meaningless excuse since there is no test or challenge either intellectual or physical in changing one's direction of prayer. The Ahadith make it very clear that the change in the direction of the Qibla was acted upon immediately and without hesitation or questioning by his gullible and unthinking robot-like followers. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 1.392 and 9.358 narrated by Bara bin Azib. 
Allah's apostle prayed facing Beitul Maqdis, Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem, for 16 or 17 months. But he loved to face the Kaaba at Mecca, so Allah revealed, Verily, we have seen the turning of your face to the heaven, so the Prophet faced the Kaaba. If Muhammad truly loved to face the Kaaba in the first place, why then did he not do so? After all, no one had put a sword to his neck to force him to face Jerusalem. Neither the Quran nor Gabriel had instructed him or directed him to face the Sham to begin with. There was no revelation pertaining to such a Qibla. It was Muhammad who unilaterally decided to face the direction of the Temple of Jerusalem because in the Meccan period and the very early Medinan period, he truly believed in the primacy of Jerusalem and Solomon's Temple over the Kaaba, which was still harboring the pagan rock gods of Arabia. Muhammad only changed his mind about the Kaaba when he realized that Judaized Arabs were not going to change their religion and believe in his version of Islam nor in him as the Prophet of Allah. He therefore conveniently changed the Qibla towards the Kaaba, his secondary choice, so as to placate his Quraysh tribe.